Welcome to the first video of a brand new series. Over the course of the upcoming videos, we are going to tackle the topic of melody in a comprehensive and practical way. The goal is to help provide you with all the information and knowledge that you need to have a strong foundation as a tunesmith and melody writer. We'll start by spending the first few videos covering the basics of what makes a well-written melody. Then we'll tackle a number of different strategies and starting points that you have available to you whenever you want or need to craft a moving melody for your music. Before we get started, I just want to take a moment to thank my amazing patrons whose support helps make videos like this one possible. With a special shout out to my newest patron, Louie. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I am incredibly grateful to have you all on board supporting this channel. If you are interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description of this video. All proceeds go towards helping me make tuition payments for school. So with that, let's get started. In this first video, we are starting things off by discussing the basic building block of every approach in this series. Melodic motifs. In music, a motif is the smallest significant musical unit. It is a very short musical idea that can be used to build entire pieces of music. They can range in length from anywhere between a single note all the way to a few measures in length. Well-known examples range from the famous fate motif from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony all the way to the two-note Batman motif, made famous by Hans Zimmer. Now, there are countless different videos all over YouTube that cover how motifs are used, and how you can develop them. And we'll definitely cover these topics in the next few videos, but for now, I want to spend a little extra time on something that isn't typically covered. And that is how to write a quality motif. If you've been following this channel for a little while, you might already be familiar with this book, Musical Composition, Art and Craft by Alan Belkin. Now, I've lost track of how many times I've recommended this book already, but it really is a fantastic resource. In this book, Professor Belkin describes internal contrast as the singularly most important trait of a motif. In fact, he even goes as far to say that a motif requires internal contrast to be considered a motif at all. But what exactly is internal contrast? Well, honestly, the chances are that you've already been using it this entire time. You may have just not been realizing it. Internal contrast is basically just what you call it whenever a motif uses any parameter of music in at least two different ways. For example, does your motif have more than one pitch? If it does, then that would be a contrast in pitch. What about two different rhythmic values, like an eighth note and a quarter note? That is contrast in rhythm. I mean, if your motif even shifts its volume at any point, that would be a contrast of dynamics. Do you see what I mean? Practically every musician under the sun has been manipulating this kind of internal contrast in every piece of music they've ever played, hummed, or even clapped to. It's not difficult to come up with a motif that contains this kind of contrast. What takes it to the next level, however, is by being deliberate with these decisions as you make them. Being conscious of what types of contrast you want to work with and how big you want that contrast to be. If this seems intimidating, don't worry. It's not actually as difficult as you'd imagine. Being more deliberate with these kinds of decisions can actually be quite liberating. With a bit of practice, you'll likely find that taking a few moments to consider these parameters is actually a lot easier than trying to wait around for inspiration to strike. So let's figure out just how you can be more deliberate with this process. Well, the five most common types of internal contrast are pitch, rhythm, dynamics, articulation, timbre, and register. 
Most motifs will focus on manipulating at least two of these parameters. Of the five, pitch and rhythm are by far the most commonly used in most music. After all, these are the two most basic building blocks of melody. But they're not the only ones you can work with. For example, let's look at our motifs from earlier. First, Beethoven's famous fate motif. It consists of three eighth notes, followed by a half note, a major third lower. This is a very simple motif that focuses on the internal contrast of pitch and rhythm. We have two different pitches being used, and two different rhythmic values. It's as simple as that. It's nothing fancy, and yet it forms the cornerstone of arguably one of the most recognizable melodies ever written. Now, in Hans Zimmer's motif, we have two notes a minor third apart from each other, gradually increasing in volume. This motif uses pitch and dynamics as its cornerstone. It has two different pitches and multiple different dynamics that it moves through. Now, the cool thing about this is that there is also a slight rhythmic difference between the two notes, as well as some subtle shifts in timbre as the horns increase in volume. The timbral and rhythmic contrasts aren't as prominent as the pitch and dynamics, but they still help contribute important personality to the motif. Now, these are two very different examples, but the one thing they have in common is how simple they are. Motifs don't need to be complicated in order to create memorable melodies. They just need to be good enough. After that, it comes down to the skill of the composer to build something bigger from it. But how do you know if it is good enough? Well, fortunately for us, it's quite simple. The very first step I recommend for writing a quality motif is to spend a bit of time thinking about what you need it to do for your music. Is there a specific emotion that you're trying to convey? A particular character or scene that you need to capture? Whatever it is, make sure you take some time to think about the reason why you're working on the piece in the first place. Once you have a good idea of what you're trying to accomplish, start to think about which two basic parameters you think will help to best achieve this goal. Maybe you want to try a standard pitch and rhythm motif, like this one. Maybe you want to try something different, like a dynamic and timbre combo, where the shift in volume and tone color takes center stage. There are no wrong answers here. The point is to just be deliberate and able to explain to yourself why you're choosing the two parameters that you are. Don't worry about the other parameters because they'll likely take care of themselves no matter what direction you go in, but for now it's best to put your focus on just two simple ideas. This will keep you from getting overwhelmed by too many options and give you a bit more breathing room to be creative. Once you know which two you want to go with, try considering which ways you can use them to promote internal contrast. What different dynamics do you want to use? How could you shift timbres? Which pitches can you use? Any rhythmic ideas? Again, you don't need to overthink it. Just come up with some general ideas that you like and think of how they can help serve the goals or the purpose of your music. Once you've got that figured out, just crank out a few different ideas that you think could work. They don't all have to be masterpieces. Just give yourself some options and pick the one that you like most. Once you have, that's when the real fun can start, and we can start to develop the idea. But that's the topic for our next video. For now, let's just wrap things up with a few examples of different potential motifs that I come up with using this approach. All right, let's see if we can just quickly come up with a couple different motivic options. I've got the six most common parameters written over here. So let's just see if we can come up with a combination or two that we haven't seen yet. Let's do uh, rhythm, rhythm, and why not? Let's do articulation. It's right there. So start with the rhythm. Let's do a quarter note, eighth note, maybe a dotted quarter note, two more eighth notes. Just randomly deciding at this point. I don't have anything I'm writing for, so I have a bit more freedom here. 
I don't have to think about how these would tie into a story. But so yeah, we've got three different values rhythmically. So we've got enough contrast. We have a quarter note, eighth notes, and one dotted quarter note, which is an eighth note plus a quarter note in length. So now we want to look at articulation. So instinctively, I'm thinking long notes should be long and short notes should be short. Let's do long, short. All right, let's give this a listen to. Simple as that. We could try, uh, when we're developing it, we could move it down to different pitches and give that a listen to. There's a whole bunch of different ways this could be developed, and we'll talk about that in, ne in the next video. But for now, this is a one measure long, very simple motif that sticks to rhythm and articulation as the most important parameters. So good enough. Let's see, what else should we work on? Um, I'm liking the rhythm idea. Let's try rhythm and register this time. All right, let's actually, to demonstrate it, let's do the same exact rhythmic pattern and show how different uh, identity, like different parameters can create a different personality for it. So we'll have just long, no differing articulations this time. The difference here is that we will take up multiple registers. All right, let's give this a listen to. There you go, that's another motif. Again, these don't need to be complicated. What makes a strong motif is that you're deliberate in the decisions you make. Here I was deliberate that I wanted to use rhythm and register as my reasons. If I had a story in mind, then the two parameters I select, I'd want those to be informed by the story. But um, let's see, let's do another one real quick. One more, one more. Uh, let's see, we've already done a bunch of rhythm. Why not pitch? Pitch is very common. But what are we gonna do? I don't wanna do pitch and rhythm. Let's try pitch and articulation. That's a weird one, let's do that. So we'll do, all of these need to be the same length. But let's change the pitch. All right, and then we'll try articulation. We'll do long, short, long, short. Let's give this a listen to. <laughs> that would be a great motif. All right, so you'll notice how pitch has a very strong impact. Rhythm can have a strong impact as well. That's why they're the most popular, also because they're both two sides of the same coin, melody. Um, but yeah, motifs do not need to be difficult. All right, just follow the steps we covered today. I would recommend coming up with a couple options of your own so that you can use them in the next video and next week and kind of develop the idea as the series unfolds into an entire piece of your own making. And with that, we've reached the end of another video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with anyone else you think might like it. I want to take another moment to thank my amazing patrons for their support of this channel. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I also want to thank each of you who are watching these videos and sharing your support of this channel. Your wonderful comments, messages, and emails keep me excited to keep making new content. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.